Travis Wayne Goodsell. Estas opium des volques. I never got to take German. Mom refused to transfer me over to Corona High to take German. And so I was forced to choose between Spanish and French and chose French because people were saying that it was easier because you don't have to pronounce anything. And yes, it was true. French is easier than Spanish. <coughs> Quiero Taco Bell. Spanish does seem a little more fun and exciting, but uh, those who speak it go very, very fast. That's probably why it's complicated to learn, is because people are speaking so fast that as a beginner, it, it's too fast to catch on. I don't know. Didn't take it. I just watch commercials. And movies. <laughs> Born in East LA, man, I was. And so, yeah, Karl Marx, religion is the opiate of the masses. His full quote is, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, and the soul of soulless conditions. It is the opium of the people. And there are people who say, um, no, really, he's saying religion's a good thing. <laughs> uh, go back to English comprehension. Apparently they went too fast for you. <laughs> <clears throat> what has religion done over the centuries since Constantine? It has oppressed mankind. It has created a heartless world. It created a soulless condition. It became the drug of the masses. That's what he's referring to here. Religion isn't the escape from evil. It is the evil. It is the cause of all bondage and oppression, holy wars, hate, and people who just act with no compassion or love for mankind. That is what Karl Marx was encouraging. He is a very bad man. So, in 1455, in March, the future Pope Pius II wrote that he had seen many pages from the Gutenberg Bible displayed in Frankfurt, hey, that's Germany, to promote the edition and that either 158 or 180 copies would be printed. He cited sources for both numbers. <clears throat> Mankind, people of religion, were for the first time able to read the Bible for themselves. Not trust that whatever the priest or the pastor or whoever was speaking at the podium of the churches and cathedrals were telling them they could actually read it for themselves. And so an excellent movie is Luther, <clears throat> about Martin Luther, whose followers wanted to form a Lutheran church. This was a result of the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation to be more specific. It was in the 1500s. So yes, the word of God led to the fall of Constantine's great and abominable church. How many different Christian sects are there? 
Let's find out. How many Christian sects are there? Wow, it's more than I thought. My goodness, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, at least a thousand, several thousand maybe, 45,000. Talk about your shattering. <laughs> they broke the ceiling. And if they're all one religion, why have different religions? If there's only one Jesus, why are there so many different religions? And so, yes, you get those who say, oh, it doesn't matter which path you get to God. All paths lead to God. Nah, no. Each and every single one of them has a different doctrine. Each and every single one of them has a different articles of faith, belief system. Every single one of them has a different nature and character of Jesus. What would Jesus do? You've heard that, right? Well, it depends on which of the 45,000 global Christian churches you belong to as to what that Jesus would do. There are over 45,000 different answers to what would Jesus do. And so, guess what? Is there only one answer for the Mormon Jesus? Obviously not. Wow, that that's that's almost as as shattering as my thinking that the church had ten thousand sleeping bags given to the Ukrainians when there was only one thousand. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so, uh, if you've been watching lately, the church is pissed again at me. I'm not dead yet, and so they keep pushing. And uh, the Joseph Smith papers are uh, capable of destroying the church if Mormons would only read them. They're available to us, guys, just like the Gutenberg Bible was. We're waiting for the prophecies to be fulfilled of the fall of the great and abominable church. Do you even know which church that is? It's not Christianity. They've already fallen. Yeah, Christians can't claim they're the one true church. Unless they try to pull a Constantine Trinity. Oh, yeah, we're all separate, but we're all the same. It's not comprehensible to mortal man. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Gerald and Sandra Tanner were the first to collect documents from early church history and they published Mormonism Shadow or Reality which is an excellent book everybody should have in their collection whether you're ex-Mormon or Mormon as a Mormon I saw the value of having the original historical documents and I was able to discern between their annotation claiming that Jesus is the Christ and we're not Christian yeah, of course not. The first vision tells us we're not Christian. The first vision tells us Jesus Christ of Constantine is not our Christ. But how many Mormons are actually reading? All of you who go on missions, quote it. I had to read it. <laughs> I would not strive for the mastery. <clears throat> you tell people 
the first vision. And then you cut off with the part that Jesus says, don't join Christian churches and the creeds are an abomination. You just tell them about, oh, Jesus came to Joseph, therefore we're true, you're not. Ha uh ha. -huh. I don't see Jesus in there. I see the sun at noonday. I see the learning of the Jew named Isaiah talking about a person named Emmanuel. And I see the language of the Egyptians of Emmanuel being Amun, the sun god, at noonday. But I don't see Christian Jesus. There are other people who find one publication who claims to have done historical research and who concludes from that one thing he's discovered. Case in point, D. Michael Quinn, Mormonism, early Mormonism, and the Magic World View. And this is what happens when you put your trust in false information. One of my commenters, who's not anti-me, he, he thinks in terms that the church is false, because he, uh, I'll read his comment to you. The solution and answer is we are serfs ruled by an elite class of aliens whom control governments and churches don't read early Mormonism and the magic world view. He has not been following my channels. He has not found the videos where I go over the botched document titled Early Mormonism and the Magic World View. D. Michael Quinn needs to stick to the money for the church of the hierarchy. I fully recommend those trilogy books, but stay away from his early writings. <laughs> and I've gone over why. He's Mormon. He still believes in the church, or believed in the church, when they excommunicated him. They came after him because, well, oh, Joseph Smith was a witch. Rocks in a hat, uh, um, seeing the dead, talking with the dead, and uh, the divining rod, and, and certain events occurring on witchcraft dates, witches' dates, which he even gets those wrong. He thinks he's got something, and he, he just he doesn't do a thorough research on it. He doesn't see the big picture. And so as a result, this uh, commenter is deceived because of the misinformation about Joseph Smith. See, he's correct that the current church is, you know, they think they're, they are an elite class, they claim they're from Kolob, outer space aliens, even Battlestar Galactica, Cobol. That's why he did what he did. Uh, whom control governments and churches. Yes, the church does. But uh, I, I've read, I have the copy, it's packed. I still have an unpacked from the first eviction threat that I was given. So here I am with the second one because the church wants me dead. I have no time to breathe <clears throat> because I do the full thorough research. I do the scientific theory development and have it tested for confirmation. He doesn't do that. He doesn't even know how. And I took his sociology of religion, or Mormonism actually, 
Sociology of Mormonism at the University of Utah. He, he insisted he wasn't going to tell anybody about what happened to him with his excommunication. What? Who are you? I had no clue until he told me that he was one of them. And I'm like, um, huh, okay. But we didn't have Google search back then, so nothing I could do about it. <clears throat> and so, read, guys. Read. That's all you have to do. So let's go over some things that you should have been reading, more than what I've already given you. I mean, oh, I was going to, I'm going to delete his comment. I will not have people led astray on my channel. They weren't even going to... On the, the link, when you search for TWG, the picture of the bunny was missing. They deleted it. I mean, they see it with uh, one... One person in 18 minutes is watching the Whiteout video. See, the... How are you going to know the truth if you don't do your research, if you don't study? See, this is what Karl Marx was hoping for with religion, is that you just trust blind obedience, dogmatic faith, where you become a slave to the system, that you believe that your worthless scum and need the elite leaders of the church to guide you into salvation for the idol god they give you. They don't want you to read the Bible. They promote the Bible and give their interpretation from it, which differs for each and every single 45,000 plus. Dear God, and the same thing with Mormonism. I did the news report where Nelson is, has passed all authority to the state presidents and bishops. And so now you're going to begin to see, unless there's a fall of the great abominable church, a division among Mormons. So when you go and visit your relatives today for Easter Sunday, you're going to hear some strange doctrines over the pulpit. They're using the same scriptures. Unless they do a program with little kids and it's all cute and fun. But, uh, I, it's just, I mean, dear God, Mormons. First Nephi, chapter 1, verse 2. Yea, I make a record in the language of my father. So the whole Book of Mormon is in this manner, which consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. So who are we talking about? Are we talking modern Jews? Should we do the DNA test of modern Jews? and see if they match the Native American Indians, because the Book of Mormon's literal history, isn't it? Well, there's some problems. The Jews that are being spoken of here are not the Jews currently. They are those who are living in Judah at the time Babylon came to assimilate them into the Borg Collective. And so, these Jews are the original Israelites, who are Egyptian. Those are the DNA you're supposed to be using to see if they match Native American Indians. And they do. Just not in the way Mormons want it to. China. There's Chinese DNA in Native Americans. Well, where did the, the DNA of 
China come from? Egypt! Ta da! The Native American Indians are Egyptian in origin. They are not indigenous, they are native. They migrated originally from Egypt, as everyone did in the world. That's why they build pyramids, which means the pyramids are actually far older than even Daniel Jackson told his audience. You never say, I have no idea, he fell for the rabbit hole trap. Well, who built them? That's not what he's there for. He's not there to say who built them, and he got suckered into the question. I watched that yesterday. Again. I'm hoping to get the Planet of the Apes today. It may not be possible. <clears throat> and so you as a Mormon have to figure out what is the learning of the Jews what is the anthropology of the Jews oh crap science <laughs> the language of the Egyptians oh crap science And the church knows this. They knows it's too much for everyone. And they count on it. So yes, they'll tell you to study the scriptures and Mormons will understand and interpret it as read. Because there's another passage that likewise tells us to read. That we all tell everybody on our missions Behold, I would exhort you that when ye shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God, that ye should read them. <laughs> Let's give you what Lehi and Nephi did with the brass plates. And after they had given thanks unto God of Israel, my father Lehi took the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass, and he did search them from the beginning. He's not reading, he's searching. And by searching he found. And it magically contains the five books of Moses. Which Genesis is not the book of Moses. <laughs> it's the book of Joseph. Which, as I've gone over with you, has multiple books thrown into a narrative as if it were a, a historical document. And it's not. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the whole point. And so, a big difference. Second uh, Nephi 5, 33. And if my people desire to know the more particular part of the history of my people, they must search mine other plates. He doesn't say read my other plates. Search my other plates. And so here we have words of Mormon. So only last one. Uh, after I made an abridgment from the plates of Nephi down to the reign of King Benjamin, of whom Amalekai spake, I searched among the records which had been delivered into my hands, and I found these plates, the rewritten 116 pages by Joseph Smith Sr. which contain the small account of the prophets from Jacob down to the reign of King Benjamin. You, you mean Nephi and Lehi. Did you forget that? 
<laughs> and also many of the words of Nephi. What? What? Oops. Error. 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 <clears throat> yes, but you aren't going to know that's an error by the Smiths unless you do your research. Because no one else in, in ex-Mormondom who claims to have found things nobody I'm the first one you've heard of who told you that words of Mormon verse 3 there's only one chapter <clears throat> is an error on the part of Joseph Smith senior and Sidney Rigdon the two main authors of the Book of Mormon and senior didn't want to be associated with it because of Canandaigua New York on 9-11 1826 And again, if you have no clue what that is, you're first not following my channel, and second, you're not doing your actual church history research. You've got to do research. You can't trust what the church gives you to read. Because they aren't going to tell you. Because, again... 19 July 1840 that the church now has whited out on Google for me to view. <laughs> Already have my own copy. Already have it. But there's a reason why Joseph Smith identified Brigham and Heber and the twelve that they chose to be in their group. that you can find out from Heber C. Kimball himself. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to look for that the other day and I got side, excuse me, sidetracked on something else. Uh, scholarship archive BYU.media Masonry, polygamy, and temple work. Knowing the church as I do, they will expose the truth, not realizing they've done so. I found it before. I can't remember if I did a copy and paste. Okay, this is just a Stanley B. Kimball. Oh, the direct descendants. Okay, let's see if you expose it. He's talking during and after the church. And so he has access to the actual journal of his ancestor. He's quoting from it. He's got the reference. President Heber C. Kimball's journal. Juvenile Instructor Office, 1882, page 77. Uh, I, I doubt that's going to be available. It's Faith Promoting Series number 7, though. was a segment taken out of his journal. Because there's no way the family would make that available, would they? President Heber C. Kimball's journal. Gutenberg? <gasps> oh! <laughs> oh!
Well, that's the faith promoting series. More files. I can't tell if these. This one has text, but I don't think. Read this online. Plain text. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Preface. One of the greatest men of its age. Who's writing this? The publisher? Who's the publisher? I don't say. <laughs> but yeah, this is the the faith promoting one that they're making available. Okay, it does have chapters called to go upon a mission to England pointed to preside. Timidity at the thought of the task. Yeah, I'm not sure it would take me too long, it looks like, to search for masonry here. So I'm going to hold on to that one, as this is a portion of that. Brother Bozier. I'd have to search this if I can't skim through and find the stories of these successes recounted extensively in Mormon history should be supplemented with the story of the hardships of wives and children left behind. Fortunately, the letters of Violet, Violet, and Helen Marr to Kimball help us to know something of the life back home. You do know that uh, they lied to you about his second wife? Do you? Did you do the search? Or do you just trust the church? <clears throat> I should have it. And then we'll go to the Peter C. Kimball website to show you. I'll just cut it short because uh, I believe I put it here. Peter C. Kimball's wives listing. There it is. from me, white it out. <laughs> yeah, I accept your cookies. And so, uh, this is Jenny Annette. Is the and it's Rebecca and Palo Moreno's family tree. She's a descendant of Apostle Heber Chase Kimball. <clears throat> and so we have the parents of uh... Yeah, okay. So the parent, they list the him, 
Apostle Heber Chase Kimball, born 1801, Sheldon Franklin, Vermont, United States, which I, I've not done their video coverage. Uh, I did do some research on Brigham Young, found out he too was from Vermont. Uh, he was further south and was a part of the Methodists down there. But when you check the maps, you see the distance away from each other. And so, yeah, his parents are Solomon Farnham Kimball and Anna N. Spalding. Solomon Spalding's daughter. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? Uh, <laughs> spouses and children. And so, his first wife married 22 November 1822, Menden Monroe, New York, U.S. Alternative Victor, Ontario, New York, USA, to Violet Murray. And we saw Violet Murray. Uh, Kimball talked about in that other passage I just read to you. 1806 to 1867, and then they had four kids, Judith Marvin, Roswell Heber, Heber. isn't that interesting, Roswell Heber, huh? Roswell, New Mexico, huh? Space Aliens, huh? David Patton, and Murray Gould, or Gold, and so then we have Married, 12 February, 1829, Carveswell, Staffordshire, England. Huh. To Sarah Perry Peake, 1811, 1873. No children, but they got married. Mar uh, Murray Gold Kimball, for example, was born in 1850. 1823, Judith Marvin was born. And so, during that time in 1831, when Roswell, New Mexico, Eber was born, he had a bigamous marriage in England. That's interesting. He's got one wife in the United States and another one in England. Let's find out about the wives of Heber C. Kimball from the Wikipedia of the church. Wives of Heber C. Kimball. Let's see what they say. Uh, uh, it says in Wikipedia, uh, initially reluctant, Kimball accepted the responsibility and married a second wife, Sarah Noon. His first wife, Violet Murray Kimball, accepted plural marriage and welcomed the additional wives as sisters. <laughs> Oh my God! And so Violet Noon, or uh, the Noon woman, what was her name again? Uh, Sarah Noon. Okay. Let's find where she is listed by a direct descendant. Uh, third wife was Sarah Ann Whitney. Fourth wife, Ann Alice Green, or Gein. Yeah, it's an H. Gein. Uh, fifth wife, Mary Fielding. And sixth wife, as unknown. Uh, then Francis Jesse Swan, Mary Ellen Harris Abel, 
Nancy Mariah Winchester, Martha McBride, Sarah Lawrence, Ellen Abigail Sander Sanders, Lucy Walker. Where is she? <laughs> Clarissa Fletcher Cutler, Amanda Trimble Gein. So he's getting involved in sisters here. Charlotte Chase. Mary Dull or Duell, Abigail Pitkin, uh, Harriet Ega Ostendotter, Emily Trask Cutler, Laura L. Pitkin. We're looking for noon, aren't we? Not sisters. Hulda Barnes, Ruth Amelia Reese, Sarah Scott. Ruth Lavina Saderna Pierce, Mary Houston, uh, Christine Golden, Sophronia Melinda Harmon, Teresa Arthusa Morley, uh, Mary Ann Shefflin, Rebecca Swain, Elizabeth Hereford, Sarah Schuler, Abigail Buchanan, Ruth Wellington, Margaret Weller, Min. Years later, there's a moon. There's a Hannah Moon. There we go. Uh, we have Presendia Lethrop Huntington, uh, Adela. Almira Wilcox, and then Hannah Moon, but that's the sister, wouldn't it be? And there's Dorothy Moon, and it was Sarah. So I'm seeing Hannah and Dorothy, I'm not seeing Sarah Moon. Elizabeth Dottie, Sylvia Sessions, and then and the question mark. Mary Smithies and Mary Huston. Uh, so apparently, Sarah Moon is not listed here. I'm trying to go back over it to find her, but. Yeah, she's got links to all these people that she knows but uh, yeah it's very clear that uh, he doesn't have a familypedia fandom uh, Hebrew uh, Facebook uh, Utah History Encyclopedia, Wicked Tree, Heber Chase Kimball. Here's the Scholarship Archive BYU. But uh, let's do the Wicked Tree one and see if that shows us the peak or pike woman. Yeah, Sarah Perry Peak. Yep. Yeah, they're saying that she was married to to him in 1842 in Hancock, Illinois. And so apparently he brought her over from England and remarried. <laughs> Or well, that's not the... Yeah, it is. Sarah Perry Peak. They're claiming that it was 1842, not 1829. And because she didn't have a child from him, who's to know? It's a sacred secret. Huh. So yeah, the family knows the truth, but the church is making sure that we don't know the truth. Because Wikipedia, Wikitree, where genealogists collaborate... Yeah, the church makes sure to keep the sacred secret of Sarah Peak Kimball.
And I don't even have an exact day in 1842 either. It's just married 1842 in Hancock, Illinois, United States. And there's some little thing at the end. What is this? Oh, it's the location of Hancock, Illinois on a map. I don't need that. I need the date. You can't give us the date. The church should have the date. They kept records. <laughs> They're not wanting to share. So yeah, this is what you do with research, guys. You expose the lies that are going on. Oops, I was supposed to do something for uh, his masonry, wasn't I? As we expose the polygamy part of it anyway. Uh, Hebrews, if you want general masonry. Masonry. Alright, and so we'll finish up with this. In 1823, Kimball received the three craft degrees of Freemasonry, and the church doesn't believe that anybody will actually do this research. That's the one thing the church counts on, is that the church is an opiate for you. But they've got to know that there are going to be guys like me who will actually obey and study and try to learn. Freemasonry? What's that? I need to learn. They were a part of it. Oh, there's different lodges? There's York Rites, Scottish Rites, and I did the Illuminati yesterday. They had their own creation, which you can see elements of in this church. Not by Joseph Smith, by Brigham Young. And uh, they count on you not to do the study and research. But that's the whole point and theme of the Gutenberg Bible, is that the Word destroys and exposes corruption. And so the Word of the truth of the history of this church exposes Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball. And the church doesn't want you to know it. And so, Ontario County, New York, in 1824, he then sent a petition to the chapter at Canandaigua, New York. So not only should you be checking the maps for where these are located, you need to find out, well, who was the Master Mason of the Lodge at Canandaigua, New York, to receive the York Rite degree of Royal Ark Masonry? It's interesting, he didn't say Knights Templar. But you won't know that unless you do your research. And then once you know about the Knights Templar, you know about Egyptian gold treasure plates. And then once you know that, he says his petition was accepted, by the way. Who was that, Master Mason? Yeah, it was Joseph Smith Sr. And so then when you go to... going to make sure that this is secured. Just in case of an accident or an outage. So I can come back later. Okay. And Joseph Smith History. You notice how Mormon apologists keep claiming, and even the church in primary, the golden place lay hidden with nursery. <laughs> that is hilarious. Nursery. Okay. Yep, here it is. Verse 34. He said there was a book deposited, written upon gold plates, not golden. See how they want to distract you away from gold. 
to see how they're trying to cover up Freemasonry of the York Rites that Smith Sr. was a part of in Canandaigua, New York as the Master Mason. They don't want you to make the connection with the Knights Templar and the Smiths. It is not early Mormonism in the magic world view. It's the Holy Grail. Literally. And so it's not Jesus as our Christ. But you're not going to know this unless you do your research. You break the addiction that the church has put you in. And you read the word to learn the truth. And the truth will set you free. Literally. But then they'll try to murder you. <laughs> but uh, would you rather be a slave or would you rather be a free man?